any image anywhere is uh, an integrated solution to address the needs of processing video in a ground station, in a UAS ground station. The people that work inside the ground stations, they can only control certain things. They can control the cameras, they can control uh, you know, the aircraft, uh, where a camera is pointed, uh, or sensor is a more appropriate word. Uh, but what they can't control is they can't control the weather. They can't control the time of day uh, and what the lighting conditions are. And they can't control things like fog, rain, mist, sandstorms, uh, thermal turbulence. Uh, those things can be corrected for in the imaging. And so we've developed algorithms that correct for the video, correct for the lighting, correct for the turbulence, uh, and present a much crisper, clearer image. There are two basic categories of algorithms. The first would be image enhancement, and the second category would be exploitation. In other words, what intelligence can I gather, uh, garner from, these, from this flow of images? Can I track things? Can I watch where uh, people are going? Can I see where they came from? Since we're processing the video in real time, we can do a lot of these functions on the fly, if you will. What any image anywhere does is it leverages a very simple concept of a video matrix switch. Um, people are generally comfortable and familiar with the concept of a video matrix switch where you can bring in a video feed and switch it to several places at the same time. Uh, what we've done is we've built a digital switching fabric that brings digitized video in and switches it to lots of different places. Now the places we switch it to are either algorithms, we switch it to processing cards, who do their thing, if you will, do their processing, put it back on the fabric. The fabric can then switch it to the next function, back to the fabric, and eventually on out to a digital recorder or um, to another display or to the ethernet. So the idea of a, of a switching fabric is to be able to move video streams around, reroute them. And once the connection is made, then it all just flows. And there's really, other than uh, the time it takes for electrons to move, there's no latency. There's two dimensions to providing the end users a tool set to design their own graphical interface to their switching mechanism. The first dimension is that each physical configuration is different. And it's much easier and more intuitive to be able to switch things when what you're looking at represents your physical environment. So we have a tool that lets you drag and drop displays and computers onto a canvas. And then by touching them, you can route them around. A TOC is a TOC, a Tactical Operations Center. And so it shows in any image anywhere chassis that host all the circuit cards you need to run a complete ground station. Everything from video ingest to processing to the computers to the video codecs, encode, decode, to pushing it out on the Ethernet. When it comes to how much compute power do I have, by being able to take a single image stream and routing that stream simultaneously to two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight processing cards simultaneously, each processing card can pick off that portion of the image stream that it deals with and deal with just that. So you can share the work, if you will, among several processing cards. By being able to insert circuit cards that plug into a fabric and just generically we route video streams into processing cards. They could be FPGA based or they could be GPU based. And so we have the scalability uh, both in a parallel dimension and in a sequential dimension. Which tools do you like to use? Do you like FPGAs or, you know, you may be a GPU type. And uh, so we can accommodate both types of users. And so generally there's a lot of excitement because um, it's an enabling technology in the sense that we can begin adding more and more functionality to it.